Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Alright, whatever, Jesus. So today, um, because I did that whole thing where I was talking about like my first year-ish um, writing poetry, it made me think about the when I started to take it seriously. Because I've been um, listening to different podcasts and shit like that. One I'm really digging right now is called Breaking Form. They've had a couple interviews that I've listened to where a poet would say, like, you know, I would write poetry a lot and was doing a lot with it and everything like that. And then I stopped. And then it wasn't until this that I became serious about it. And with me, I was writing poetry or whatever, but around 2001, no, 2000, around 2000, um, I got in a new band. I ended up meeting a woman who heard me sing, and her father was, for years and years, a manager for a lot of very, very popular artists. Like, you would know them the second I said them. And then he became the president of a really fucking big record label slash music group. And he was that for years and then stopped that and went back into managing for a little bit. So she had this like pedigree and so she wanted to discover people and she discovered me immediately wanted me to put a band together and get into the studio. So with her pushing me, I started doing all of this shit and went and got studio time and she got a producer to work with me and all this shit and the, the output of that, like I said before in the last video, I think, was the Untimely Death of Spade 13 album. She ended up not knowing what the fuck she was doing because just because you are the offspring of someone who knew how to fucking do something doesn't mean you know how to do a goddamn fucking thing. So it ended up being like a year and a half, two years of my, no, it was actually closer to two and a half years of my life. I put in the hands of some ditzy fucking chick and nothing fucking came from it. Which is another reason why I'm so into doing everything myself kind of thing. But anyway, so after that started to wind down, I started doing um, more acoustic stuff. And that's when I started, like, the jobs I had revolved around, like, music events. So I was hosting open mic nights at a couple different coffee shops. I was not the house band, but like I had certain nights at different coffee shops and bars around Orange County. So I was playing all the fucking time. And so a lot of my writing went into, like as soon as I was done writing the poems that I was showing you last time, I started writing all of like the Goodbye Hope material that's been, I've been putting the EPs out of. And then um, I was writing um, the pastel portrait songs that those will eventually come out to. Um, Skin Slip, I was writing those and tons of others. But so that's what my writing was focused on. And then um, in 2004, the end of 2004, I think I told this story before, but I'll tell it again really quick. I was still doing the acoustic shit. And back then my acoustic thing was the Matt Wall Massacre. Um, that's what I was playing as. And this one bar that I played at all the time, the promoters like, hey, we're having this big Halloween show with a bunch of like, like bands. Like, do you think you could put a band together? Because I love your shit. If you could put a band together, that would be awesome. And then that ended up being Creeperson. So I put that band together like in a, with a month's notice and had enough shit for a set. And then we we're off to the races or whatever. So over the next, I guess, 10 years, like all of my like poetic writings were focused on Creeperson. 
And then anything that was more than that, even though like I did the Cartwain Twain books and I did the um, Bloodlust Romance book in 2006 or seven and the sequel to that, all of my writing was really scripts, like screenplays and shit. Because from 2006 to 2013, I was mainly just making films for like my job, well, my income. And then in uh, 2012, I started writing books and serials again since the Kindle Gold Rush was happening and all that. So that was awesome. And I wrote serials and novels. Like, I mean, I still dabble, you know, but like, for like my main income between 2013 and 2016, that was all I was doing. And then I left North Hollywood and moved to Big Bear in 2016. And something started happening. And what that was, was a lot of my friends started dying or having horrific things happen to them to where they weren't the same anymore. Like, whether it was strokes, heart attacks, strange diseases, car wrecks, paralysis, um, shit like that. I don't know. There, there were a couple. And I will talk very briefly about each one. There was um, a friend of mine who was murdered. And then a friend of mine who died suddenly because of an accident that happened at a hospital during a routine procedure. And then um, there was somebody who really meant a lot to me who um, committed suicide. This all happened seriously within probably a month of each other. And then as that went, over the next three months, a few more of my friends committed suicide. And they weren't connected. Like, they didn't know each other. But people I knew started fucking doing the goddamn fucking thing. But the friend of mine who killed himself, the first one, fucked me up so bad because he always joked about it. And he would get fucking drunk and call me up in the middle of the night and tell me he was going to do it. And I would fucking say to him, fuck you, you are not, you piece of shit. Hang up the phone and fucking go to bed. And he'd go, oh, okay, all right. And this went on for years, like this kind of fucking shit. And I met him back in 2000. So, like, we're talking years of this shit fucking going down. And then the last time I talked to him... He was going through some shit. He had some legal shit looking at him. And he wanted me to give him some money. And I had just moved. And I wasn't working on a movie at the time. I didn't have any fucking money. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. And so he told me that he was basically going to go on the run a little bit. Like, go hide out in another state. That he would get back in touch with me. Then... I didn't hear from him for like six months. And then I changed my number. Not to get away from him, but just because I got a new cell phone and a new cell phone plan. So I ended up getting a new phone number. Then I had to hear about it after the fact. And he went and he he went to a gun range um, in Texas. And I, which is weird because I don't know why he would have ended up in Texas like that's so not him but I guess that's where he was hiding but he went and um, went to a gun range and rented a rifle to shoot at the gun range or whatever at like 8 o'clock in the morning and um, and that was that that fucked me up so bad because it made me think like does that mean like all those times that he was going to do it before he would have done it, but, like, me telling him to, like, quit being such a bitch and to shut the fuck up was the thing that was, like, keeping him around. I don't know. It just, it really fucked me up. And I didn't know how to deal 
with that. And then the guy who went in for surgery on something minor and it ended up killing him, that hurt because he not only became like a really good friend of mine, but it started out because he was such a huge fan of mine. And we never met in person. Like we would just email each other back and forth and message each other on like messenger and everything like that. But he always like, it was like, he was a fan of my stuff, but it wasn't just that. Like, it was like, he knew to give me support, like verbal support. And it was like, he always knew like what I was dealing with without having to talk to him. And he would say like, you know, whatever. And he would just, he would say stuff that would like fill me with like, yeah, dude, like what I do is worth something and I'm fucking worth it. I deserve this, blah, 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 blah. And um, so those two really fucked me up. And I mean, obviously like other murder and suicides is fucking crazy, but it was just... And, like, people having strokes and stuff and not being the same afterwards all at once really fucked me up. And so that's when I started writing the stuff that ended up becoming um, All My Friends Are Dead. And when I wrote this, <clears throat> it's a real little poetry fucking thing. Like, there's not many poems in here, but it's all about fucking motherfuckers dying, you know, and just death. And how, what that means to me kind of thing. And I have an audiobook version of that up on my site or on YouTube here somewhere if you wanted to just listen to it. But when I wrote those poems, I never thought about putting them out. Like that was never like, oh, I should do this so I could put them out. But this was also around the time that I had started doing Weird Mask. And so I was doing zines. I had a, there was a zine fest coming up that I was tabling at. And so I was like, oh, like I should print some of those out and see if anyone's interested in reading my sado fucking depressing fucking poetry. I think the first, the, the only run I did of those, there was 20. I think there was 20. Because I think it was... That was 20. Exhausted Bird, I think, was 30. Ingrown Air was 40. And Acid was 60. I think that's how that broke down. Um, but anyway, so I made the thing, and they sold. And I was like, oh, holy shit. And it was weird, because, like, for a long time, like, I could not get people who were into my fiction to move over into my poetry it just like was not happening and I think what it was was I was just like well I'm writing poetry now like the fact that I was able to just like shit on a page and like feel good about it and like that's done I'm like oh my god this is so much faster than writing novels this is fucking amazing the whole fucking thing and I think the, the reason why people who read my fiction ended up coming over was because I wasn't giving them another option. I, I just kept putting out poetry. They were like, ah, and I'm like, nope, this is what you're getting. You fucking take it or you fucking starve to death if you like my shit. Like, this is what you're getting. Deal with it. Yeah, and it it's been going great ever since. So All My Friends Are Dead is the first... One of those I did. And then, like, all the poems that are in that are collected in Fingering the Mundane. So, um, if you wanted to take a look at that. I have no idea where those books are. I guess I moved them for something. Whatever. I don't know. But anyway, so that was a horribly fucking depressing story. But the whole idea here is, is it wasn't until, like... Life started fucking with me to the point where I didn't know how else to deal with my feelings and my emotions. And that's the thing that pushed me back into poetry after all of those years. You know what I'm saying? So um, 
I think that's really what it boils down to. And I think there's probably a lot of writers out there who end up in poetry because they can't process an event that happens in their life. And then once they see how easy it is to like bear your soul through poetry, like going back to writing fiction is really difficult because there's just so many barriers. That's how, at least that's how I feel about it. Um, I just, I feel better writing poetry than any other kind of writing. So, so that's it. So that is how I got back into poetry. So let me know what you think down below. How did you get back into poetry or how did you get into poetry? If you haven't had the come back to it yet. Um, but yeah, so let me know what you think. Type hard, everybody, and I'll talk to you guys later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.